It's like you have a cookie and the, and all the ingredients are shit. But you're like, but I do like peanut Reese's peanut butter cup, and there is one of those. Okay, on there, so then just go. eat the peanut butter cup and <laughs> throw out the, the rest of the movie. Yeah. All those beautiful people in this neighborhood. Hey, let's beautify the neighborhood. <laughs> Stay indoors. <laughs> to get ahead in business. Good luck. Thanks. Oh, and I'm glad you gave me the right finger. Sometimes you have to play ball. Chester, my company sponsors a girls soccer team. I'm coaching the ladybugs. That sort of goes with the promotion, you know. It's a big office right next to mine just waiting for a guy like you. What the hell do you know about soccer? You kick the ball down the field into the net. <laughs> Try and control the ball. Ah. Forget the ball. Try and stay on your feet. Oh, I'm off to a great stop. What he doesn't know. Win the game, win the game, win the game. Could get him fired. Get the book, get the book, get the book. Ah. I can't look. Hey, what are you, a fish? What he's willing to try. What? Could get him arrested. No, you're crazy, Chester. It'll never happen. Chester put a boy on a girl's soccer team. Ow. Don't worry, if it's too tight, you'll get used to it. <gasps> Meet our new ladybug, Martha. Give her a big ladybug reception, all right? <laughs> After the game, no showers. Now all of those going skinny to be... I'm here to pick up my daughter, Martha. <laughs> get in the car quick, these hills are killing me. But let the competition beware. Let them fight. Let's try to win at something. Nobody plays the field like Dangerfield. You keep up the good work this time next year, you'll have 10 men under you. Rodney Dangerfield. Hey, Dave, can you make a women? Ladybugs. All I know is, I got a lot of balls. Oh. <laughs> may, may I start with a formal apology? Because oh we, my God. we were on uh, the Namely 90s podcast where we discussed some future episodes that we're getting excited about. Yeah. And I went on quite a rant about how excited I was to watch this movie. I take that all back. We both watched this as kids, correct? Absolutely. Like multiple times. I remember. I remember watching yeah. it. Yeah. I remember there were specific scenes I went, I remember yep. that. I remember yep. that. I remember mm-hmm. that. Memory is a weird thing. <laughs> it certainly I, is. My I word. bet you I blocked 95% of that if not movie more. from if not my more. brain. And the most mortifying parts are in the trailer. They they do not they don't they don't like lull you in with like this is a cute movie for kids. It's like no. they're letting you know right away. This is Rodney Dangerfield. He's making sex jokes with kids right out of the gate. Why <laughs> did I think this was a kids movie? <laughs> that there was there was a little tidbit that I found that said like Rodney Dangerfield thought that the reason this movie wasn't successful was because it was marketed incorrectly. Right. What was it marketed that that was, as? As a kid's movie. And he thought this was for teens and adults. This wasn't for teens either. This was not... I don't know who it no. was for. <laughs> because the adults who were enjoying this, some of those scenes... Uh, were they? they <laughs> I were think, you? I think I think if you paid to, as an adult by yourself to see this movie in the 90s, you were put on a list. I this think is you're... like the equivalent of like Jackass. Where you're like... <laughs> But you know what you're getting when you sign up for a movie like that. And you don't feel gross when you're done with it. And I don't watch it with my kids. No, no, you would not watch this with your kids. Even though it 100% feels like a movie you'd watch with your kids. Why on earth was I allowed to watch this? Okay. <laughs> There's, I think we can file some uh, future movies into that category. So the, there are 14 movies here. <laughs> You tell me, did you see these as yeah. a child or not? And where were they? They are ranging anywhere from 1990 to 1996. Okay. They're all rated PG-13. And and in the 90s, PG-13, which is basically R. Right. Today. <laughs> and you were born in 84. Yep. I was born in 85. Mm-hmm. And so we were 11, mm-hmm. 12. And still and not 13. At an age where your 13. mind is forming and, and <laughs> taking in PG-13 <laughs> is the threshold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we'll just start in 1990. Kindergarten Cop. Just yep. yes or no. Yes. Edward Scissorhands. Yes. The Adams Family. Yes. Wayne's World. Yes. Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. Robin Hood Men in Tights. Yes. Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Yes. Airheads. Yes. Dumb and Dumber. Yes. The Mask. Yes. Billy Madison. Yep. Clueless. Yep. Happy Gilmore. Yep. 
Kingpin. Yeah. Those are all PG-13 movies. <laughs> Kingpin absolutely like st- oh, jumps out. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that movie is R and even like pushing NC-17. I have also <laughs> seen all of those movies many, many times yeah, as a kid. Yeah. Some of these with my parents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mom, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> mom, we're, we're, you and I are going to have a talk sometime What soon. were you... Th- if you're listening, which you're not, Mom... <laughs> What were you thinking? We're going to bookmark minute uh, two and a half of this episode, and we're going to send it over to Mama Dahlbeck. So yeah, I think that is... Ma- Mama Von Brack, too. It's, it's, it was all of us 90s kids. That's where my brain went, yeah. was how and why was I allowed to watch this? Yeah. But also, we were just allowed to watch it. And yeah. I told you, too, Kristen has the fondest of memories of yep. this movie. She played soccer growing up, she I'm assuming. She played this soccer right growing up. House. Thought Jonathan Brandis hilarious. is a cute boy. Jonathan Brandis. You're not going to lose. Come on. And you have Kimberly. <laughs> the girl. Yeah, the, the, the girl. girl interest, yep. She's in Hocus Pocus. Oh, so, yes. So many girls yes. are like, you are it's checking right every yeah. possible box imaginable. Yep. I am in for this movie. And who? what teenage girl doesn't love Rodney Dangerfield? I mean, come oh, on. Oh, right. yeah. He's a heartthrob. <laughs> The well, bug eyes. Was he 60 when he filmed jokes. this? He was so much older than his wife. 27 oh, years, yeah. I believe, I found. Way older. Way older. Oh, the problems, they never cease. But very, very early on in this movie, you just go, oh, no. Yeah. This was not how I remember it being Even Even all. the introduction is like, what so is this? Re- it's so, so weird. Let's just jump into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's take it from the top. I guess, first off... <laughs> 1992, yeah. PG-13, oh, yeah. hour 30, mm-hmm. 5.5 on IMDb, which to my knowledge is the second lowest movie we've watched. Or that third. sounds right. And I'll, I'll be honest, that seems high. Blank <laughs> Check and I think Three Ninjas were the ones that came were... below. I think they were like 5.3 oh, maybe. okay. Well, then this movie should boost up those other ones. Oh, my God. <laughs> I might agree with Rotten Tomatoes is 16%. That feels a little more in the ballpark. Seems high. <laughs> I need single digits for this. One one point six. Is there a decimal point missing? And even the PG thirteen. I mean, when you break down the rating, it's just a laundry list of so many, so many things. The line I enjoyed was: "There are many hells, dams, and shits. There are a few bastards and bitches." (laughs) Whoever's writing on IMDb, I tip my hat to you. I mean, I started writing down problematic immediately. (laughs) One minute in during the opening scene, which apparently. Is what just supposed to paint the picture that he's like a loser because yeah. he's attending this whole like motivational yeah. speaker like I'm good at my job I yeah. matter from some like mirror. dictator looking figure like I don't it's very wild bizarre. wild <laughs> that could have been looking. easy just fill in some the you know, like uh, some guy with a lot of energy like I don't it was a very interesting choice to make this the character anyone would have been better than who they selected <laughs> I feel like I I could say that a lot in this movie anything could have been better than what you just did what in this they movie. landed on. <laughs> absolutely mortifying yeah so one minute in when you get a job make sure your boss is taller than you so it's easier to kiss his ass this listen this is a classic vehicle movie where they said rodney you're gonna be in a movie we had a movie for you we'll make the rest up later but you are the star in our movie and that's basically what it was it's like rodney just go for it just rip rip some jokes riff all and you he want. does but it's not even him all the time it's setting him up it is or saying up. things mm. inappropriate to him yeah whereas three minutes in we get not one but two assholes <laughs> where is that kind Chester, of the actual you people sound like an asshole <laughs> well if i'm an asshole it's because it's contagious <laughs> it's you know listen it's a solid comeback but i guess already, maybe not a pg-13 <laughs> already i'm like we're three minutes yeah. and six seconds in nick yeah and i'm already looking to vomit i don't like it so what I found for Taylands and Plots, to climb the corporate ladder to success, a guy agrees to coach the company's all-girls soccer team with the help of this secret weapon, his fiance's son. Already makes no sense. <laughs> Already makes no sense. And also, taglines I found were, getting respect is one big goal, and he's coach, not first class. We're Again, we're, stre- we're stretching, but, but you know, I, I get the joke. I found another one, mm. which is weird because they use his last name, and I don't ever recall them using his last name at Absolutely any point. Absolutely not. The only... Other thing that he's called than Chester is Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Which is not explained. No, not explained at all. (laughs) Chester Lee. Okay. Yeah. Why? No. (laughs) Not once. He looks Asian. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Chester Lee must take on the coaching duties of his company's employee daughter's soccer team. That's well worded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In order to impress his boss. 
desperate for success, he enlists the aid of a ringer, his fiance's son. Wackiness ensues. Ugh. <laughs> Buckle up for this hilarious ride. Did you not think wackiness was ensuing the entire time you watched this? That wasn't the word I would use. <laughs> Plot done poorly. A creepy old white guy makes one bad decision after the next, never faces repercussions, and actually gets rewarded in the end. A metaphor for life itself. I don't even have a plot <laughs> described you don't, poorly. You don't need one. The this movie is just, makes no sense. It's just this meme with the cat thing that's like that. It's like, it's just itself. I literally wrote down, is this the longest hour and a half movie ever? It definitely felt long for an hour and a half. That felt like a long hour and a half. And nothing happens. No. You have a few soccer games, it's over. Yeah. It just... Well, especially when we came hot off the heels of Little Rascals, which was... Flying. You never felt like you were sitting. This was the longest hour. And, and the half. dichotomy between yes. Little Rascals, which was like the most innocent, heartwarming yeah. thing imaginable. <laughs> and we are just like, guess what? Into the deep end. Of like cesspool yeah. avenue. You thought Alfalfa and his underwear was bad? You get ready. You thought a lady. hair boner was bad? <laughs> so this was directed by Sidney J. Fury, which didn't have too many movies to his name. It was it's shocking. Super... <laughs> <laughs> Superman 4, The Jazz Singer with Neil Diamond, and Ladybugs were some of the uh, call-outs. And writer Curtis Birch, who only wrote three movies, of which they are The Return, Joysticks, and Ladybugs. This budget for this movie, another $20 million 90s movie um, where what? I don't know where the money has gone. Soccer balls? Rodney probably got, what, five of that? Like, easy? Like, probably. just, here's your millions. Probably. It grossed fourteen point eight million. So, which is, is actually absurdly high. That so that's exactly what I was going to say. Because as much as I was reading about, oh, it was a flop. It didn't do well. It's like it, it almost, almost made its made money. Its money back. <laughs> it got pretty close. This almost made its yeah. money back. That and that that again that just goes to show you when we're reviewing and watching some of these old classics and you see some of these ratings, you're like, let listen here, sir. Let's you start here and we'll work our way back and then maybe you'll feel differently about Little Rascals and some of these. Well, other we classics. haven't even said so. This is on YouTube for free. Not a good sign. <laughs> For anyone that wants to watch it, there's ads, <laughs> yep. which just prolongs the nausea. Makes the hour and a half. It makes it feel like you're watching on TV again because you got to sit through the commercials. And it so. makes me so much more <laughs> upset and uncomfortable. But if you want to watch it, yeah, if you do, parental advisory at yeah. your own risk. This is not it's with the an kids. Uncomfortable movie. Yeah, it is. And you might want to watch it on a VPN so that no one can see that you've watched it. it doesn't get pulled back to or at the account. very least, just delete your browser history. <laughs> just throw afterward. away your device when you're done. Just be clean of it. So the meta score was 36. It ranged from 50 to 25. We've done movies that got zeros. Yeah. This lowest one that I saw in the meta score was 25. Please tell me Ebert reviewed this. I am sorry to inform you. No Siskel or Ebert review that I could find. It wasn't a lot of reviews, but I was I was scouring the internet. I mean, I was did like, they Please. even release it early for critics to view it? Maybe there, not. There was a, I have three reviews here that say some people watched it and wrote about it. The Los Angeles Times gave it a 50. Though it's basically a kid's movie with a cartoonish structure, it's laced with lewd innuendo, jokes that suggest teenage sex, homosexuality, and even pedophilia. The core of the humor is raunchy, but the tone is sunny and even-tempered. It even tries to go for a few inspirational moments, feminist statements, or sermonettes about overcoming fear and realizing potential. So in the same review, you've talked about pedophilia and feminism. And yet, and those, don't co <laughs> those somehow coincide with each other to give this movie a 50. And I... To that critic's credit, mm -hmm. that is an accurate statement. Mm -hmm. Everything that they said. There is the dark, dark, bad, uncomfortable yeah. feeling. And there's the, you can do it, honey, you're beautiful feeling. Because yeah. mm -hmm. Rodney actually he's is got not, a heart he's not a, oh man. <laughs> Hold he's on. not a worthless <laughs> coach in this. Like, yeah, that's true. He's a he's bad got the coach, right, he but comes he has a heart, yes. if you can say that. Because there are girls that don't believe in themselves. And Penny Pester. Yeah. Good old Penny Bless Pester. her heart. Yeah, bless her heart. So, I guess, but... you're going, It's oh. still going a long way for a 50. That's I think that's given it a lot of credit. And down towards the bottom, I have a 30 from Variety, where they said, A klutzy would-be comedy about a girls' soccer team, Ladybugs is sexist, homophobic, and woefully unfunny to boot. Paramount apparently thought it was ordering up another Bad News Bears, but the garish Ladybugs has the look of a third-rate TV movie. 30, not a zero. 30. <laughs> what? I don't even know that that... Ex I think the rating is more accurate. I think the description was less accurate. Yeah. That first description is pretty spot on. 
this is just him being, whoever this was, being upset about it. And so I, I'm like, yeah, I get why you're upset. But you still gave it 30. Right. What are the 30 points? Like, that sounds like a under 10 rating to me. If this were an Olympic event, I would want to see where did those points come from? <laughs> How do we arrive at 30? And your car that you're flipping is like 0.5 or like 0. Yeah, zero. show me. Show yeah. me the scenes that, that warranted that. Yeah. So like, so like you said, you get a few minutes in and we've already got multiple assholes being said. Matt, Matt Matthews checking out butts. Says don't, and then Rodney says, "Don't sit too close; you'll strain your eyes." And later, something else. Yeah. I'm problematic. So now we have a masturbation joke. That's and- perfect. I can't believe we waited that long to get to it. <laughs> we should have hit it in the credits and let people know what they were expecting. And before that, you even have seven minutes in. He's hitting on the receptionist. Calls her oh sexy. Oh my god, the receptionist. How does scene. he? How is she not married? Oh man. Nine minutes in, he says that Mullen's wife handles all the policemen's balls. Yeah. Like there is no being shy about it no we're not suggesting things we're just flat out yeah. coming out with it it's been ham-fisted for my liking and then 10 minutes in the conversation he has mullen he talks about three hookers in the midget da i did hear that story mm-hmm. he's talking to somebody uh, just just, just uh, a friend just an aside oh of in course in the middle of an interview the or whatever three hookers with in the midget <laughs> da yeah who could forget that tale <laughs> can i rewind back to the receptionist conversation Please. because one of the lines that was said that he says the receptionist is plenty of heat left in the furnace. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That to me was like already like we've we have we are like you said no punches pulled. Like no. we are fully swinging as hard as we can. And that's one of like eight yeah. either suggestive or gratuitous things he says. Yep. And granted, we are lame dads. Very. I I will fully <laughs> admit that. But this, even though I walked into it thinking this is going to be a problem yeah oh exceeded every expectation <laughs> i ever every had. problem benchmark it was like through the roof through yes the roof, through the roof and here's the thing i mean i used to love watching stand-up comedy i would watch rodney and all these people with my dad whatever and enjoy it but there is a world for that and then there is a world for kids movies and sometimes they work this is not one of those times. I think the problem is if you try to take a kid's movie and make it raunchy, yeah. you're setting yourself up for something, yeah. and now you're beaten over the top by something else, yeah. so it just doesn't come close. If it was something like, you know, you put, I don't know, Eddie Murphy into a kid's movie, yeah. where before you Nutty had, Professor, you got, sure, it, it works. Because it was toned down. Yeah. If you're trying to make both of them work simultaneously, yeah, that's tough. They're they're competing good. Yeah. You can't say like the N word in a kid's movie, <laughs> and I feel like that's what they were trying to do. Unless like, it's an adorable little kid, then maybe it works. Or if it was Stymie that said it, I don't know. <laughs> but there's a way to make this work, people. Back yeah. to the drawing board. <laughs> But it, this, I think, it was too hard. They were trying too hard, and yeah. maybe to Rodney Dangerfield's credit, they didn't have the right target audience, or they True. didn't promote it appropriately yeah that they were trying to hit like every demographic they're like well, we can so. get the girls for soccer we can get the adults to take their kids to this yeah it's pg-13 you can go either way it's not like an r-rated horror movie where you're like well we can right, only get right. 18 and older let's and just and it's the 90s so <laughs> who gives a you're shit you're biking to the movie theater anyway <laughs> your parents don't know where like you movie are movie tickets two dollars or three dollars like what do you got to lose you just sit in there all day long and to and to their credit too i think starting with that premise is potentially fine because think of all the kids movies even you watch today where like okay those jokes are not for them like these are for the parents there are movies oh, yeah. Pixar where the jokes. jokes aren't for it's there's the kid jokes and the parent jokes so it's like okay it can be done well this but it's not, not it. suggesting that a no. guy is having sex with an underage <laughs> girl in a or changing boy. room <laughs> or boy or boy anyone underage anyone it's yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sweating yeah this yeah. is oh I said, I, I mean, I'm 10, seven, a few notes in, and I've already said, why is this a kid's movie? Why? Why? It's, why? It's, it's not. Is because the there answer. are kids in it. I, kids gu- I guess. I guess. Yeah. Did you notice there was a lot of minivans in this movie? Like, was this movie yeah. sponsored? Like, even all the ex- execs pulled up in minivans. I was like, this what? It must be the Mullen Company <laughs> car. I mean, do they, is it a dealership? It must be because every, even Rodney, like everyone's car. I was like, this is pretty heavy on the, what was the deal here? What was the placement deal here? This is how in the weeds I got with that, <laughs> trying to distract from the nausea and yeah. the heartburn. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Is that every time Rodney Dangerfield pulls in the driveway, he goes over the corner of the grass a little bit mm. and barely avoids hitting the mailbox. 
And I wondered, is that the same clip every time? Oh. Or is he really driving and doing this every time? That's how <laughs> invested I was in something other than something that made me uncomfortable. You got to look, look for joy when they're Driving over the grass. <laughs> I will say, as much as this movie pained me, and it was very hard to get through, once in a while, he would crack a joke that I would laugh, and it wouldn't reset me, but it would be like, Ugh. it just gave me this feeling of like, Prob- Brought you back down a little, maybe? Yeah, there's, it, it, it's almost like maybe in the right hands, maybe there was a way to do this. I mean, I'm sure there was. It involved cutting probably half the jokes that were made and then, you know, toning Rodney down a lot. But the, the joke the joke that I'm referencing that he says is when they start playing and he sa- he yells out, I'm off to a great stop. And I thought that was just a, so- okay. a solid joke. Just, again, when, when you... When you smash You're giving a lot of credit. <laughs> when you're smashing, it's like you have a cookie and the, and all the ingredients are shipped. You're like, but I do like pe- Reese's peanut butter cup, and there is one of those. Okay, out there, so then just go. eat the peanut butter cup and <laughs> throw out the, the rest of the movie. Yeah, then I think that's what this needs. I and I wanted to start saying okay because there's so many issues. There's so many. Are there things about this movie that you enjoyed, or like what were your favorite things about yeah. the movie? Mm-hmm. I like it. I mean, something that. Like you said, as you're watching, you're like, oh, I do remember some of these things. Get those nail breakers. That that burrowed its way into my head. Any soccer game, any sport where like people are coming back, it's get I've dropped, get those nail breakers. Get those nail breakers. Chris and I have used many, many times. Yep. But it's also preceded by that bitch broke my <laughs> nail. And I forgot that part. I was like, oh, right. I only oh, remember, I remember to get that. those nail breakers. I remember part. that. Yeah. So that, okay, that is funny. And there are some funny moments with some of the girls, yeah. some of the things they say. I wrote down four things okay that that's that's a I lot thought that's more than I, I enjoyed yeah the crowd at the beginning of the game is for the the first ladybugs game yes is perhaps the most accurate crowd of any kids movie we have watched thus far <laughs> it is just people peppered here and there in the stands <laughs> they're kind of half paying attention yeah. half clapping half singing the national anthem <laughs> they're not very enthusiastic Today it would be just on your phones the parents on their phones but yeah. okay yeah that's about the yeah. energy level we're going for. It hits right. So it's not the mayor shows up for this meaningless game or, you oh, know, sure. it's just here's a game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's one. Um, when Chester gets booted, when his fiance finds out about their whole scheme sure. and he is at the bar drinking oh, and Matthew's drinking milkshakes that's, and they show the back yes. and forth between the two of them. That was good. Maybe not what... <laughs> Not, it. <laughs> not what's afterward. Not what precedes it oh. or not what comes after. But that flipping back and forth to see them both drinking at the bar. And then like the bartender slash the yeah. guy at the ice cream shop being like, I've heard it all, man. What's going oh. on? No, so, you okay. haven't, bartender. That, that was funny. I like that. Yeah. Uh, when Penny Puster says, holy boogers. Holy boogers. I like that. In a sea of all the crude jokes, a holy boogers does holy stand out. boogers. The delivery's <laughs> great. Yeah. And maybe because of how crude it was before that, just a, yes. a good booger. You needed a good booger joke. Yeah. And Penny was the one to deliver it. Oh, she was great. Yep. And then finally in the championship, so the girls are just like going at it, mm-hmm. pulling each other by the hair. Oh, yeah. Profanity, you name it. And the ref finally gets in the way and goes, all right, girls, cut the crap. <laughs> Again, That'd be not great, but yeah. it was just like, yeah. okay, that's funny enough where I'm, I can maybe finish this yeah. movie. Yeah. And the vomit has only risen like halfway you can hit up. It, you can hit it with uh, some some tums and little, knock it down. Yeah, the indigestion <laughs> is at bay for now. Yeah. So there were only like three other things that I vividly remember. Yeah. One was when Matthew slash Martha is running up and down the yes. stairs and sliding. Yes. Because I remember in the moment thinking like, how the that hell was is he so doing that? was so cool. <laughs> and I tried that move on the side of the yeah. stairs. You got to grease that or something. So, gotta... There had to have been like a platform yeah. because he is hauling ass. And he hits it every time. Nailed it. Great job. Yeah. What an athlete. <laughs> He's just showing his athleticism. <laughs> and then Coach Bull. Oh, Coach um, Bull. I remembered him. Yeah. I remember the jumpsuit. And he's in a few other things sure. too. Mm-hmm. So, okay, that's good. He's in Waterboy. Yep. Um, he was on home, home Improvement all the time. Sure, sure. So, okay, I remember him. And then I remember the dub, 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 dub. Oh, wow. All that of that in the it, last It brought game. me back to Doug a little bit. I was like, that's some Doug sound. It's music, like but. Doug. <laughs> it's kind of Ferris Bueller. Yeah, yeah. It's, mm-hmm. But that. Yeah, agreed. I think even if I played soccer in the field, just be like, dub, 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 just hit dub, it. Dub. Hey, uh, announcer, PA, uh, hit the hit the dub dub song. So yeah. those are my fond memories and things that I remembered. <laughs> so now to have like those four moments mm-hmm. 
in a sea of an Tattered, hour and a half. Tainted with this movie. Oof. Yeah. You're, like you said, memory's a funny thing. It is. So they set, the, they set the scene. Rodney comes in. He's trying to get a promotion. And the boss is basically like, we've won all, we've won all these championships, at least three to my knowledge. They're killing it. Right. And so now when Rodney agrees to do this, he gets to the team where no one is on the team. Not only that, no one's coming to the games. No. And my memory of youth sports or like travel teams or anything like that, if this was a team that was good, this would be stacked with good players. People would be in the stands. Like you don't go from winning five championships and no one gives a shit. So Correct. maybe I was kind of like, maybe you just tweak that part of the story and say they've just been bad. Like they want to win a championship, but they've always been bad. That part didn't check out. It, it was weird because the first practice too, they have the giant years behind them yeah. on the hill mm-hmm. i'm assuming that means they won the championship right and they so just like years they like calendar dates maybe maybe just like numbers <laughs> here they are here they are but yeah if they've won like five or six in a row yeah. why no one else has been on the team ever they've only kept one girl like that's who it who didn't Everybody... play or didn't score <laughs> yeah. a goal or i don't know i really don't know yeah i really stopped like dead in my tracks when they're having a conversation, and it gets into race a little bit. We, oh, we, yes. I we decided, also wrote that We decided down. to dip our toes into, you know, black people are good at these sports, these sports. And it, if you would have been around me, you would have felt the air leave the room. I, clen- I clenched up so hard where I was like, no, no, this is going to go so bad. And Ronnie's just kind of shaking his head for a while. And I'm like, are they going to just slide out of this conversation? I don't know. And he doesn't. No. It wasn't as bad as... No. I braced for the worst. I did too. I was like, no. <laughs> this is going to be I braced real for bad. like a hurricane yeah. F5. Yeah. And we didn't get that no. quite. But I wrote that down because, yeah, she seemed like the better at running, the better yeah. at basketball, football. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, what about hockey, water polo, fencing, badminton, <laughs> yachting, fox hunting? <laughs> so, okay. Kind of funny because yeah. it's all like rich white guy sure. sports. Yeah. He's grasping at straws. Yeah. Still, That's probably the tamest version of how that conversation goes with Ronnie Dean. Still a bit Daniel. uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. You probably can just cut out. You can probably just ditch that part. <laughs> yeah. That'd be all right with uh, me. But something that also jumped out to me is, did you see what Dave, the boss, his wife, do you see what her name was? I don't think so. Glynis. And the only reason I knew is because I put the cap, the closed caption on the subtitles. I was like, Glynis, what is this name? It's not a name. Not a name. What's more, well, they're in the elevator. What's more important than a beautiful wedding invitation? Getting off. Everybody yelling, getting off as they walk off. Yeah. The red punctuated. And there are so many jokes too that I'm like, I don't even quite understand it. I just know it's not good. <laughs> you just know, even, yeah, even if you don't like get the joke, there's like. There's sexual undertone. It's your creepy uncle that you're like, I'm yes. really, yeah. uh, again. This is the sixth dick joke you've made at Thanksgiving. Right. We haven't I, even I gotten it. to dinner. Yeah, it's bad. That's what she said. I get it. Okay. <laughs> moving on. Yeah, moving on, Rodney. A woman comes on and Bess is holding the wedding invitations and she goes, oh, this is great. You're getting married. Yeah. She mistakes Chester and Bess getting married for Chester and Julie getting married. Correct. To which she goes on and says to the both of Julie and Chester, good for you. We're all God's children. Basically, it's being like, it's okay for people of different races to get married. Have as many babies as you can, I think she says. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, just, Which again, it's just like, okay. You just don't have to. But yeah. why am I so uncomfortable <laughs> at every scene? <laughs> if this movie's goal was to make you as uncomfortable as possible throughout it, done. Mission accomplished. Nailed it. Absolutely. I was there. Yeah. This is where we get Matthew fantasizing about Kimberly coming to wow. him in a, in a. How would you even describe that? I guess outfit. a swimsuit, but not even like. A ladybug style. Uh, she's a child. She is a child. I didn't see how old either I, one I of d- them I, were in this. It, it's whatever it is. It's, it doesn't Don't matter. Principle. The principle is there. But that like dream sequence, the whole thing. Yeah. I went, I do not remember no. this. And nope. Kristen goes, neither do I. No. Which again, the fact that we have both seen this movie so many times. Right. Maybe it was just shown on TV. I mean, that could be. You know, is this like a TNT thing? This could be probably like, a solid TV movie when you cut the right parts of it. Like I'm everything. sick of it's all It's a half these hour long movie. <laughs> nine to five. Like, did they just change yeah. the movie? Change the... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that could be. That could be. But um, I had not seen that, at least consciously, no. ever. And still not, still, a, not a fan, whether I saw it before or this is the we're first st- time. We're still pulling all the uncomfortable punches. Chester's version of fooling everyone with Matthew is the just the short bob wig. Just get a wig. Just the wig. Yep. That's it. Don't even change your voice. Don't change anything no about what you're doing. 
just all right let's go we're playing like and verbally and, berate everyone on the team call him honey sweet no one is the wiser no i said like and and there's multiple times because there is a scene when um kimberly comes over and he starts to talk real high i was like why are right. you doing that now you've already throughout the whole movie not made that choice <laughs> not consistent it go it comes in and out yeah. sometimes he's martha and yeah. he's like this and other times it's just like, hey hey all right yeah. Yeah, pr- yeah, sissy Pris, like just no and then regard. Chester goes, well, we got to get you a dress. Mm. For what purpose? You don't need it. You don't need it. If Because if the two of them are spotted around town, okay, this is Matthew. The dress makes no sense. No. The only time that Matthew would be wearing the dress is out in public with the team, yeah. which doesn't happen. Right. Well, until there's a skinny dipping scene, evidently. Which, which... makes no sense. <laughs> so the, I wrote down, and I don't even know if I'll be able to read this whole thing. But when they are trying on this said dress. Oh, my God. And then Chester puts balloons in his shirt to yeah. make it look like boobs. No reason. No. And then you look, and there's a whole, like, carton of balloons just sitting there. And ca- I guess in case other people want to try that sure. as well. Just for retail balloons. And he says, just remember, we got to be careful. I don't want your mother to find out. She'll kill me. Don't worry, I'll be finished soon. Then he says, don't oh, worry. God. If it's too tight, you'll get used to it. Oh, oh, the retelling of it is... It, it's it me keeps back. going and going. And then the mom is mortified, who's yeah, sitting faints. outside the changing room. Chester touches her daughter's face. Oh, oh what a little, girl. little girl. Yeah. Oh, my God. Too far. <laughs> hey, hey, Rodney. Too far. Too far. too far. But we do get a little bit of uh, story, uh, some drama in our story, which is Matthew being upset with Chester and drops the you're not my father line and storms oh, off. Classic. So we're we're trying to pull everyone back in. You may, you may have been inundated with inappropriate joke after inappropriate joke, but th- they're still going, hey, we, we still got a movie here. Just come on right. back now here. <laughs> and then, you know, you think it's going to turn. Mm-hmm. Matthew doesn't want to do this. Rightfully so. Who can blame him? Yeah. And Chester is about to admit to... You know, his fiance, this is why I was doing it. I didn't actually get the promotion. Yep. Matthew comes in and saves the day and says, Good like, oh, Matthew. Chester's actually a great guy. Why? Yeah. Why? He's a great guy when you get to know him. Is he? <laughs> what is the... You've already had issues with him up until this point. Like, you might as well... If there's anything that's telling you he's things are not on the, on the up and up, here's your final sign. Like, you could just go all in and be like, hey, mom... He's dressing me up like a girl to play soccer. See Even you later. You say it's a heart of gold because he just wants to get a promotion so he can afford a better wedding for you. Yeah. Maybe just get another job. Maybe. And it it's exactly to, to what you're saying. It's it's when you think the gas will be, they'll let off the gas a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's almost when they double down. Like So the scene where Matthew says, you're not my father, runs out of the van. Chester's response to that is, next time you jump out of a car, make sure it's moving. Yeah. So kill yourself, basically. Right. Or seriously injure yourself. Um, Julie starts talking about giving it up if the guy is a Porsche or is rich. You know, well now hold on now. You know, if he's got a little bit of money, you know, right. we're give him uh, give him a little something. Yep, good advice. Um, and that that is then followed by the uh, dressing room scene, which is <clears throat> mortifying, Un- unbelievable, unbelievable. Is there, there a worse version to... of this movie? Uh, there probably is. That's I don't know how much that Rodney Dangerfield improvised. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'd sure a lot, a lot of these lot. lines yeah. were fed to him, but. I'm sure he could also come up with many on his own. It'd probably be like a Robin Williams situation where they just let him rip. Like Mrs. Jokes. Doubtfire, yes. where there's like a whole other movie. Yeah. And I actually made the note where they did. So they do the scene where Kimberly comes over and now Matthew is flying around the house doing the changing clothes, yep. boy, girl, boy, girl. Grab I was like, oh, this is like uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. I went to research. Ladybugs came out before Mrs. Doubtfire. So yeah. I I don't know what to do with that information. I know. <laughs> but it really felt like I was like, oh, they're just ripping off Mrs. Doubtfire. I was like, oh. No, it's the opposite. No. I know. No. After that, Chester's talking to his boss and Chester says to him, you know how girls are. They never come through right away. Yeah. Dave has a daughter on the team. Who he doesn't seem to give Who he give doesn't up. seem to give a shit about. So maybe so maybe up. Chester's read the room correctly, but like you're talking to a guy with a kid on the team like, oh, girls, you know, they need to give it up more, right? It's like, hey, fuck it's face. Like, exactly. I have a daughter on the team. Yeah, <laughs> maybe don't talk about uh, hooking up with women when one's right there. And that whole relationship is weird too. So clearly, he doesn't give a shit about his daughter. No, except they want an amazing coach for their daughter to be on a winning team. Right, but they won't let her play because she's not good. The wife at the beginning is the her whole point in finding new coaches. Will we do things for each other that oh, we enjoy? Oh god, the sexy saxophone. Okay, See? if you two are married, <laughs> first off. 
coming as a married person, that's not how you talk to your spouse. No. It, and it, the whole thing was just weird. And, like, it was like they were trying to play it off like a sexy secretary. Being oh, like, yes. If yes, you do sure. that and playing even the music yep. behind it. <laughs> Like, you two are married. <laughs> what is happening? It's already established. You're probably... This is weird. Not and speaking of fun and weird and who the hell knows why things are happening, we get Coach Annie with the Beavers. They play yeah. the Beavers and she comes in hot, like ready for war to the point where she's screaming to Chester and to the team across the field, the Ladybugs are losers because you're a loser, Chester. Your team is going to get crushed. What is their history? What is her history with him? I don't him? think there is any. There, she is very upset with him and them. And I, I'm, I'm just not sure why. I will say, I actually laughed out loud when he starts reeling off lines about Coach Annie. And one of them was, when she walks into a room, mice jump on chairs. And I... Yeah, that's not bad. That's That actually made me laugh. And so she I, is kind of scary, so okay. And another... So there's so many parts <laughs> to this movie that are upsetting. Few of which kind of are planted seeds that you wait to see if they come through yep. later on. One of those being that there's an Asian girl on the team named Chu. Yeah. So the instant that is made prevalent, I go, there's a sneeze joke coming. Sure and it's is. coming and I know it is. And sure enough, Chu sneezes, joke is made. I was yeah. like, low hanging fruit, Rodney, you're better than that. Let's yeah. let's let's But go. maybe not. Maybe he's <laughs> yeah, not. there's anything that's apparent here, he's not above anything. If there's anything a '90s movie will bring, will bring, will 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 bring front and center at some point. If it's a movie with sports, someone's getting a nut shot, and you yep. better believe it's going to be Matthew because he's the boy well, on the he team. He has to be. He's and the he's only getting guy. a nut shot. So yeah. you get you get the funny. He's upset. He's he's hurting. The medic comes out to see if he's if he's okay. Laugh laughter ensuing over yeah. his over his nut shot. But even that whole thing is made awkward because the person comes out and asks if he needs medical attention. And yeah. Rodney makes the comment like, well, if you help him with that, you're going to have another problem. May I say that's a pretty good Rodney. Oh, thanks. <laughs> if, I may, if I may say that. Every, again, yeah. every opportunity to take it another level, yeah. they do. So then we get to the skinny dipping scene. Oh, my God. How, I have never... This, this sounds it like so unnecessary. What the guys, whole what guys envision yeah. girls sleepovers to be? <laughs> Pillow fights. We're and... like, yeah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> girls. To no. my knowledge, and girls, please feel free to let <laughs> anyone me know. sign in. Let's comment. Your soccer team. No, you you just go skinny dipping in no. the middle of the day. You can you know that the writer of this movie was not a woman, and this it, is it another just seems part of that. Like bizarre behavior. No, a classic '90s sports kids sports movie trope you get a trick play that in no way would actually work in real life which is the the ball stuck the kimberly between. the ball stuck between yeah. kimberly's legs and then matthew kicks it and it's a goal it's like okay this is who could have ever imagined <laughs> i was totally fooled wait a second it's between her legs the what's ball happening was stuck and now it's not <laughs> right in the goal it goes matthew maybe one of my most egregious homosexuality jokes mm. after that comes i think pretty close after that game yeah there's a dad biking with his kid. Oh, my God. Oh, my so God. So it's a yes. tiny child with yes. a little carrier on the back of the bike. All he sees is his father's behind. And Rodney says he'll end up marrying a guy named Ralph and will wonder why. Uh, uh, what? Why? So, so much of Rodney's commentary. I just kind of hoped at some point someone would be like, hey, Chester, when you're about to say something, maybe just don't. Maybe just hold, like, get through a few jokes in your mind and then... Give it a minute. Give it a day and see if you still want to tell those jokes. <laughs> I think several things wrong. Every time I thought they went as hard, <laughs> terribly worded. There's some ex- <laughs> as, <laughs> There's an exec somewhere slamming on a desk as, going, I need more jokes. I need dirtier jokes. As bad as they could make it, yeah. it kept going another notch, another yep. notch, another notch. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't want any more notches. Yeah, no, no more notches. We're all notched out. Please, no more notches. The note I made about the skinny dipping scene was, no, they are not skinny dipping. No. Stop it now. And Mrs. Mullen, what the fuck are you doing? You're going to let teenage girls just skin? Like, Some what is- guy's teaching her volleyball lessons Obviously, in their she's, private volleyball court? She's the rich, like, absent parent trope I get. But it's like, but no, no. And the only possible way you can get Matthew slash Martha out of that is have Rodney Dangerfield dress up as an ugly woman. It, it writes itself. And Jim. pretend that- you're the mom. He looks more like a Glennis. He should have been Glennis Agreed. in that moment. That's a Glennis. And maybe you're like a grandma or a weird aunt. Yeah. You're definitely not the mom. No, no one's buying that. And even when he's dressed up like the mom, 
Glennis bends over. You, we actually get. I was like, oh, they're not gonna. Surely they will not show what we're seeing. Oh, and they show it. They just yeah. show her bending there over. They, they could have just showed Ronnie's reaction and been fine. No. Again, every opportunity to push it. Too many notches. <laughs> this episode is called Too Many Notches. And then now the team's winning. The town is getting into it. The paper. It's on the paper. The it's boss, in the paper. The boss is upgrading the score, the record board every Yeah, win. there's a weird board that he's yeah. like displaying because apparently they don't know the game. No. Even though it's in the paper. Yeah. He is surprising yeah. everyone. What? He's flipping numbers. Oh, you thought this was six. It's a nine. <laughs> this is the talk of the town. It was no a zero. It. Nope. Yeah. There's a one in front of it. Yeah. I, fine. I will say, I love, and we've talked about this in, um, was it Heavyweights where they sang at the end, the whole cast sang at the end. We get yeah. Rodney and Jack A singing Great Balls of Fire. It's not necessary at all, but it's no. like, I feel like this was a trope that should have been used as much as possible in the 90s. It's just like, this isn't necessary, but it's just fun and I'm enjoying it. It's just, probably the most wholesome part of the It is really movie. the most wholesome so I, part of the I movie. I think we're just clinging on to yeah. that for yeah. out of necessity. Yeah. Chester, the the one, one of his, he starts to, they start to, huh. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, they start to try to redeem Chester. They start, this is where the Grinch's heart grows three sizes that day. And Chester goes, he sees Penny Pester and she's upset. All the girls are talking to the baseball team. And she's sad because yeah. she doesn't, you know, I don't look good. Yeah. In theory, a very heartwarming scene. Yes. And something that could have just easily redeemed probably at least a portion of this character. But. And they even at that moment did not let off the gas. No. Why? No. She has to kiss him on the cheek. Oh, take your take your hair down. Take off your glass. Just all of it just fucking felt so gross. I wasn't even... <laughs> bothered by that yeah. he's like you're beautiful yeah but then at the end she has to kiss him i don't need I'm, that i'm like please just please stop it doesn't please, it doesn't need to happen please stop and i get the vehicle for the scene it makes it gives her confidence and then later on she's in the game and she's confident oh, yeah, she lets her hair down i love you know i love this for penny i love this for penny Foster, I do too. she deserves every every ounce of every that. bit of it but i don't please don't kiss chester you just don't just don't well, um <laughs> And for maybe one of our final acts of drama, this is where the story unfolds that Bess sees Matthew in the drag, in the woman's outfit. Yep. And Chester's caught red-handed. Sure. And I, this was actually a moment where I was like, oh, she's going to laugh this off or it's going to be way under play. Oh, no. She actually she gets pissed. got equally as mad as she deserved to. And rightful. I was like, good for you, Bess. Like, she has a great line, too. Yes. You're a great salesman and I'm tired of buying your bullshit absolutely so. give it to him Get, Bess Bess if there's any awards to be given this movie it's to you in that scene for you it's know. your house yeah. anyway <laughs> kick him don't, out don't you true don't you dress up my child like a girl and you know to benefit which I guess benefits me in some way but still it's no no not in my house no not in my house Chesterfield Chester says at the bar plenty of fish in the sea if you've got the right bait or the bartender says that to which he yeah. responds well my hook's not what he used to be enough dick uh, jokes okay, Chester enough Jesus. dick jokes Chester to which it's followed, I dressed him up like a girl and had him play with me. Yeah. Is what he says to the bartender. Maybe you just didn't have to say anything. Yeah. Or it would have been funnier if he says, I've heard it all. You know, just tell me. Yeah. And then they just throw show a clip of him being Perfect. thrown out. Uncle Phil. Done. Just out the door. Per- absolutely. That's all you need. Again, this movie in the right hands, I think, functions as just a fine kids movie with Rodney Dangerfield. If the purpose of like this movie was to like get Rodney Dangerfield to for kids to like him or to get him out to a different audience, there's a way to do this where it's fine, it's acceptable. He makes a few cracks that maybe are just like '90s movie don't hold up in the long run. It doesn't have to be this. This is darts at a dartboard. It, it, it's it so like, is. all right, let's do a sports movie. It can be kind of it's Mad Libs. Movie. They just wrote Mad yeah. Libs. <laughs> let's do uh, a all girls team, but they're not good. So let's. Fill in a boy that dresses like a girl, mm. and we need some comedian. Ronnie Dangerfield's available. I saw he wanted Sam Kinison in, but he was busy yes. touring. So this could have been even raunchier. That's true. But again, he was probably just like they had to write it for someone. He fit the mold. Great, great. Not a great, result. great indeed. 
And this is where you get a lot of, so Martha is now, it's established that Martha is not going to play in the game. All the girls are saying, shit, and I'll be damned. And they're all just cu cussing away. Why not? Um, Let her rip, girls. And Chester hits us with, the only thing quicker than that is when I'm having sex. Oh, and yeah, said, when they were down 14 seconds yeah, in the game. Yeah. yeah. And what I said to that was, you know who would probably love this movie then and loves it still? Number 45 himself. I feel like Trump could have been that guy. They could have just said, listen, Trump, do you want to be in a movie? Here, here's your part. If he you was could, available. I mean... I, this this feels right in his wheelhouse. When uh, was it, Bull, Coach Bull, the, the yeah. army coach? He goes up to him and yells, "If you were in my army, you'd be on latrine duty." Chester hits him with, "Smells like I'm there now." Or Coach Bull, I know your full name. Sure. What makes no sense either is how he somehow was able to transport an obstacle course onto the soccer field, <laughs> and the girls are all warming up before the game. <laughs> Where did you like airlift in this obstacle course? Mm. I, I would love to hold on to these moments as the only ones that didn't make sense. Yeah, movie, that makes Jim. no sense. Everything else <laughs> checks, checks out. out. Even the damn Wienermobile at the game, which I was like, you know. Driving on the field. You know that that, that was only to, only to facilitate a dick joke. You know that's why they did. They're like, oh, I, dick jokes, Wienermobile, rip -a doo I was more concerned about the turf. <laughs> you cannot support you cannot play the on this weight field? of no. that vehicle on it's, the middle of the field. It's a, it's a bad it's decision. It's all man. torn up. Yep. And then, and then they get all the players that come together. And this is the classic um, Little Giants when we talk when you talk about sp uh, sports scenes where there's all these players that you're like, they were not in the rest right. of the game. Who's this is this? Who classic is this? version. You're like, there's like eight other girls I've never seen before. With like the halftime speech? <laughs> yes. Yes, so many. <laughs> and then they all have their moment. Like, yeah. have you scored a goal this year? No? Well, now's your time to shine, yeah. ladies. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you've learned. See what you do. So there's... Yeah, the one that makes all the jokes and is shoving girls over and mm. okay. And okay, that was funny. Yeah. Every yeah, everyone gets their moment. Penny, the nail breakers, all of that. Penny, like everyone Pester. all the characters that we were introduced to. Chu goes back in goal. Yep. She's a magician. Sure. Coach Bull wants her tested for steroids. Fine. Sure. Sure, Fine. Coach Bull. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. The line where in my stomach? Yeah. Oh. Aggressive. Oh, aggressive. <laughs> This movie, this movie gave me the, the, the indigestion. Indigestion. <laughs> it's true. This was no joke. Um, and we get some wisdom from Chester. He, sa he says to Dave, what good is being the best if it brings out the worst in you? Uh, that's. Wow. I wanted to ask you One of the few that. highlights in this movie, I, I guess, I is asked, that line. Yeah, I wanted to ask you that question. Yeah. What what good is it? It's He's right. Listen, when you're right, Spot Chester, on. you're right. But he follows that up with, our first score, what a feeling. I had the same feeling when I was 16. Right. Stop okay. it, Chester. We Stop fucking it. get it. Jesus. It's like you can't just resist but no. to be a fucking he asshole. He can't help himself. <laughs> he cannot help himself. God bless America. But this is where we finally get, get those nail breakers. At, at this point, I'm like, it's like I'm a, a boxer in the eighth round. Just like, please, just stop. And finally, it's get those nail breakers. I'm like, huh? And then it's, those bitches broke my nails. And I was like, oh, never mind. But you're still kind of like, this is the least offensive thing uh, in a long the time. Least, so the you least. are clinging onto dear life. Yeah. You're like, you know what? And th that's probably why we remember it. Like, yes. get those nail get breakers. Get those nail breakers, yep. It, fine. Yep. Well, just take me home. End this. Just, just put end me the out of my, step on my neck. <laughs> Put the pillow over my face. <laughs> just freaking end it already. Oh, and it doesn't. It still doesn't end. There's, there's just still more. <laughs> so much left. Um, but at the very least, a gripe I can have that isn't a horrible joke is Pen. This is where Penny gets her confidence, and she yep. and she takes down her hair in the game, and she gets going. I'm like, Penny, leave your hair up. Like that's only going to impede your ability to play this game. No. It's your long ass hair in your she, face. <laughs> she's got to show that she's confident. She's badass. So fine, Penny. You do you. Yeah. And just and just when I thought we had checked off the racism box and we said, all right, we're all done with the racist jokes. Thank you, Chester. Hmm. He wasn't done. This is where Chu is saving all the goals. And he says, she's a magician. She became the Great Wall. Why did you have to make that joke with Chu? Why? I don't know. I feel I like... I feel like... I just... I don't know. You could even just say she's a wall. <laughs> well, then I have something that might cheer you up. Dead or alive. All right. I hope. I'm, I'll tell you what I'm hoping for. Well, well I know one of them. Unfortunately. You know two of them. Oh, yeah. That's true. So I'm not even going to do yeah. that because Jonathan Brandis is uh, part of the 27 Club, unfortunately. Heartbreaker. He took his own life in November 2003, and then 
Less than a year after that, Rodney Dangerfield really? died from complications of heart surgery in October 2004. Didn't so know that. they're both gone. We know that already. Yep. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that to you, <laughs> Nick. Do Plus, something else, dude. I love Jonathan Brandis. Who doesn't? He was in a TV show called Sequest. Like he oh, was yeah. just starting to get big. Yes. Huge fan of him. Amazing blue eyes. He's what I mean, an he was athlete. A tra- he he was he was one of the solid. Ones. He was one so of the ones. rest in peace, Jonathan Brandis. Rest in peace. However, some other people. <laughs> we have Tom Parks who played Mr. Mullen. Yes, he is alive. Here's the crazy thing. Mm. Based on my limited research, yeah, <laughs> he is absolutely alive. Okay, he has no birth date. I cannot find a single. <laughs> did, was he ever there at all, Jim? <laughs> Are we? I don't know. I'm questioning everything I after don't this movie. Know. <laughs> I could not find anywhere. Wow, that shows a birth date. I see some background. I see like I don't know if it's a production company or you know he's he's investing in a few things. Mm. You've seen recent pictures of him. I so cannot find a birthday. He's... If you can find it, yeah. I'd love to wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> I would love to. Coach Bull, who is played by Blake Clark. Well, to your point, he has been in more recent, well, recent being the last, what, like Water 10? Boy. <laughs> what was that, 15 years ago? I'll say hmm, he is past. He's alive. Oh, okay. 77 years old. All right. Good for you, Coach Bull. Good for Bull. you, Coach Bull. Probably still fits into that jumpsuit. Uh, easily. Your girl, Coach Annie, mm. played by Nancy Parsons. Coach Annie. I'm looking. So now here's you're, you're playing mind games. I'm looking for the moment where you turn on me, and I'm thinking it should be her. But I feel like you've doubled back on me, so I'm going to say she's alive. She's dead. You are, you are in your own head. Maybe it's not me playing the game. No, it's Nick. all up in here. You can imagine what it's like up here. She died in 2001 at 58, congestive Ooh, heart failure. That's young. That's young. Well, you saw how hard she was I going. I mean, she... The veins were popping out of her neck. She was going 110. All right. And then last but not least, we have Bess, played by Eileen Graff. Is alive. She's alive. Okay, 74 Bess. years old. All right. Good for you, Bess. So there you have it. Good for you, Bess. The only other aspects of this movie that I called out were... Wait, does that make sense? I heard Chester put a boy on the girls' soccer team. That's imagination. That's the kind of guy I want running my sales department. But didn't... If you already know that? No. So you so at that moment, you think he's had no idea, and this is the time when he realizes... Correct. Okay. Okay, fine. Fair. But that's the benchmark for being good at sales, is just fooling it. Well, I got fooling everyone? Yes. Okay. That Never mind. tells you all Never you mind. need to Take know. Take it out of the problematic part. <laughs> well, I mean, that tells you all you need to know about Mr. Mullen. Yeah. And then I have kind of an answerable, unanswerable question. Oh, please. So at the end, the girls' softball team mm. is really all boys. Make sure you got your cups on. Is that funny or no? I honestly, honestly don't know how to feel about it because part of me is like, okay, that's kind of funny mm-hmm. because they leaned into it super hard. Yep. You have Tommy Lasorda makes a cameo. Coach Cannoli. Coach Cannoli. <laughs> not racist at all. None. And so then to be like, oh, yeah, I heard, uh, or maybe that's who says it, is I heard, you know, you had a, a boys player on a girls soccer team. Oh, yeah. And he's yeah. like, that's absurd. I can't believe you are yeah, saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Grab Chester. your cups. Yeah. So I don't, I honestly don't know. No. What's the Because note? the rest of the movie just felt so inappropriate and heavy yeah. handed. Is that like them poking fun at themselves mm. or is it just more of like, no, this still is not funny. No. You idiots. You Where I'm idiot. still uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I really don't know. The fi- Well, the final line of the movie is, I finally got some respect. And yeah. I said, did they write this whole movie just so he could say that? Yes. Like, this is the whole point of this movie. Yes. is like, Rodney, starring role, you get to say respect at the end. The rest of it, you just get out there and just Who let cares it work. what yeah. happens the rest of the way? Just yeah. roll credits. Yeah. Finally got some respect. So, You're on top of the world. <laughs> you, you certainly are. Which is a shame. Well, back to school, the other Rodney Dangerfield. Well, I'm sure. I don't know if there are others. But back to school where he goes back to college with his son. Mm-hmm. I remember enjoying. Now, maybe on a revisit, that movie is a very I never saw that. Too. But what, something that's always held strong with me is complete tangent is that they're um, as... 80s as it gets, they have a college party in Oingo Boingo plays, who is mm. Danny Elfman, um, 
uh, Jack Skellington. The right. that, that was his like 80s band. So they play in like the house party. I was, and they made college look like, oh my God, look how much fun college is. There's bands, there's parties. I remember loving that movie. But now watching this, I'm like, well, am I going to revisit that at some point and just be... But, but no, that's college. That's college kids. Right. That feels more I mean, Caddyshack, you have him. Caddyshack. And he's just lobbing the one-liners in yeah. there too. Yeah, he's perfect in that. That's what his, he is. Just one-liner out, one-liner out. But when you make it a whole movie of that... right. You, well, that's, uh, I guarantee that's what happened. They watch Caddyshack and they're like, all right, that guy gets brilliant. a whole movie. Yeah. Give me 20 million. Casting options. You talked about Sam Kinison not being able to do it because he was on tour yep. and he always felt bad about not being, he regrettably had to pass. I don't, I don't was know. Was he they, regrettably? He, it's, it was the wording. I don't know if he regretted it, but. Oh. He, regrettably, he had to pass. An, okay. Another uh, casting option. I don't know if you saw this for uh, Julie's uh, role said Whoopi Goldberg was given the option yes. to either portray Julie or take the lead role in Sister Act. Yeah. I do believe you made you, the correct decision. You kind of chose correctly. <laughs> Way to go, Whoopi. As it was uh, one of the top 10 grossing films of that year, and Ladybugs was not. Not so much. No. And there were two sequels, I believe, of that, too. Yeah. And she crushed it. Jen, and I, Jen a big fan of Sister Act. So. Say, I, I remember both those movies, yep. the first two at least, and... Very well done. And in all fairness, Jack A didn't deserve that movie. She was on like 90s shows and stuff, and she was fun and lovable, and I don't think she deserved that movie. I don't <laughs> even think she was bad in No, it. she wasn't. You kind of needed like a strong foil off of you did. Rodney. That, she did what she was supposed to do. Yeah. And you what played she, your role. So, I t- but sorry. I salute you, Jack A. You didn't deserve that. Though. No. Trivia and facts. Near the beginning of the film, Jonathan Brandis's character, Matthew, calls Ronnie Dangerfield's character Chesterfield. Saw that as well. I, evidently, this is a throwback to Brandis in real life adding feel to people's names that just rolled into the movie. It was never explained, and I was like, oh, why is he calling that? And it happens a few times, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just one it's, line. But it's like in his way where when he doesn't like him, he's calling him Chesterfield, and then when he likes him, he's calling him Chester. So it's like... I really don't know. Again, I don't know. Um... Jonathan Brandis and Vanessa Shaw dated yep. in real dated in real life. Not shocked during after filming. I saw that dream you, sequence. You saw that chemistry? Yeah. That childhood chemistry. Originally, the production wanted Matthew when he was in disguise as Martha in heels. Jonathan Brandis practiced uh, walking in them for some time, later, later commenting, high heels are horrendous. And for filming, however, it was decided to go with flats because they wanted Martha to be as, be as awkward as a girl. And I just thought, would that... That made no sense to me. I, I felt like you well. just used the same reasoning to justify it. Right. Like, like I don't. Yeah, flats are way more. <laughs> awkward look how than awkward meals. I am on the ground. Like I don't know. It, again, and then the other one I saw was Rodney Dangerfield was disappointed in Paramount's marketing strategy. He felt it made it look too much like a family comedy, uh, where he thought the demographics were teenage Which, teenagers and adults. Okay. Dangerfield believed that Paramount's marketing was the reason the film flopped upon release, and I said. I don't think that is the I don't think that's the reason. reason. I don't think it helped huh. to his credit. No. Um, I think we've covered problematic. Is it, you know? Yeah, I have one more trivia. Oh, please. That I just thought was odd. The movie was originally going to film in Dallas, Texas, but the location was changed to Denver, Colorado because of concerns about the effects of heat stress on child actors in Texas. And I was watching then when they played, and mm-hmm. it just flat out says in the field, like, Denver, Colorado. Oh, really? There's signs everywhere That's on the hilarious. soccer field. And so I don't know where this was supposed to be taking place. Doesn't matter. And the, like the setting, I'm sure there would have been a joke about it somewhere, something sexual. But weird. <laughs> well, they, left it, they left it on the table. Weird that that was why they changed location. Yeah. Like, ooh, too much too much stress on the You know what? We're going to look out for the well-being of these children, except we're also going to put them in scenes with pedophilia jokes. So... We're, we right. got you guys. But Don't they worry. won't realize how much this scarred them until 20, 30 years from now. Yeah, I so. would love a uh, a recanting of this movie with anybody who's in to be like, do you... Because I don't think anyone do else think? was really in anything except for Vanessa Shaw. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We should reach out. I wonder what Penny uh, Pester's up to. I would love... I, I would love it. I would love to know, Penny. Sequels, prequels, spinoffs, and such. No, such, please, no, 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 please, God, no. no, not, not at all. Not ever. Did you feel it was appropriately rated Jim? Uh, maybe 16% Rotten Tomatoes. It's a one. If you're focusing on that. Yeah. It's one of the few times I agreed with Rotten Tomatoes. So I was, I've been thinking about this. If blank check and three ninjas mm. are around this 
amount on IMDb, like your 5.3 yeah. to 5.5. I think, especially Three Ninjas, that's just a bad movie. Yeah. But I think Not an it can be movie. enjoyable. Yes. This, I don't know that it's an enjoyable movie. No. I think there are enjoyable moments. Yeah. But do I agree with the rating and can I recommend it? I honestly don't think I can. No. And this is coming from someone that watched us growing up. And Loved that it. Chris and I both said, we remember liking this movie, yep. quoting Get Those Nail Breakers. But you are somehow able to compartmentalize everything else everything. and block <laughs> like the blinders you yeah. must have yeah. to You're enjoy the, this. The gymnastics to get around in and out of this it's, movie. It has wild. to be wild. Yeah. So... If anything, it's a little high. I do not recommend this. I do not recommend The this. only reason I would say to watch it is if you saw it as a kid and you think it would hold up. <laughs> and especially if this is one of those where you think, oh, I'd like to start sharing the things I loved as a kid with my children. Freaking screen this shit first. Maybe don't. Maybe don't. Maybe. Wait till the kids are in bed. Screen it and go, nope, yeah. Jim and Nick were right. We dodged that bullet. I am going to rewind that opinion and throw it in the garbage. Put yeah. on anything else. Literally anything else. No, it is not recommended. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 Dub, 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 dub. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Please follow, rate, review, like, and subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and tune in next week when we review another cinematic masterpiece from our childhood. Until then, I finally got some respect. Okay.